Hi, in this video I'll be talking about communication between Ableton Live and Tractor through MIDI messages. I will be using the Jack Audio Connection Kit with the following setup. Jack-S for the prefix, uh, frame period 128, sample rate 44.1K and everything else is pretty much default except that I'm using playback only so it doesn't uh, use the microphone that I'm currently using to record this video. I have both Ableton Live and Tractor running and both of them are going to my system speakers so uh, for this Tractor is not going into Live just for simplicity. So basically Tractor into the system, Ableton Live into the system. Next I have an internal MIDI port called Loop PE1 from nerds.de. This is also called a virtual MIDI driver. Um, it's free. You can download it from the nerds.de website. If you uh, have seen my video on synchronizing Ableton and Tractor, you most likely already have this. Or if you have MIDI AUX and MIDI Yoki, uh, that will work as well. Now, if you have a look at this picture here, this is what what I did in the synchronizing video between Ableton and Tractor. Basically, you have Tractor and you have the MIDI clock. So the tempo is sent to the internal MIDI device and that then sends it to Ableton. Or basically, Ableton listens for MIDI messages from the internal MIDI port. And that's how the clock from uh, Ableton stays in sync with the uh, tractor. And the next step is to now send MIDI messages from tractor to the internal MIDI port and then have Ableton listen for those MIDI messages and of course do something with them. So let's get started. Let's start by having a look at my Audio setup in Tractor, of course using Jack Router. The output routing is currently set to internal. You can use external if you want to, but I'm just using internal, so all the decks are just going to the 1 and 2 output, which are my system speakers. Then I have enabled the MIDI clock, so we send MIDI clock, make sure that it is enabled. Now looking at the controller manager. I have a generic MIDI device here that is set to LUPE as the output port and this is used to synchronize the clock with uh, Ableton Live. First thing I want to do is use this fader and synchronize this with the crossfader in Ableton. And that is also the main reason why in the output routing I'm using internal rather than external because if you select external the fader disappears. So let's go ahead and do some MIDI mapping. Select file, controller manager and make sure that the MIDI clock entry is selected which has loop PE as the output port and now we're gonna add a custom output message which is under mixer then crossfader. Select that. We now have a new assignment here for the crossfader control. It's a global assignment and the mode is output and it's not currently mapped and that's the next thing that we'll do. We will map this to a, a CC message and you can pretty much pick anything you want but I'm gonna pick 91. So now you see here it shows up as channel 01 CC09. In Ableton Live, go to Options, Preferences, select the MIDI Sync tab and look for an entry LUPE into the middle, Input. So not Output, Input, and select everything. Track, Sync, and Remote, switch everything on and then close the preferences. I have two audio tracks where both of them have a simple drum loop in them. I have enabled the crossfader. You do that by clicking 
the little x here. Deck A is set to A and B is set to B. And let's now go ahead and map our crossfader. So click on MIDI to top right. Make sure the MIDI mappings are visible. I'm going to drag this over to the side a bit. Then select the slider, the crossfader I mean. So click on it. And I'm going to switch over to tractor. And move the slider. And as you can see, to the left here, there is now a new entry for CC91 which is the message that we sent out of Tractor. It's mapped to the Master Mixer Crossfader. Go out of MIDI mapping. Gonna put this all the way to the side. So watch the crossfader here. Now gonna move the crossfader in Tractor. And as you can see, the crossfader moves along in Ableton Live. Mission accomplished. Let's test this out and enable external clock in Ableton Live. And I'm gonna run deck A and B. They are now waiting for the sync message. Start something in Tractor. Okay, that's enough of that. Now we just mapped a crossfader in from Tractor into Ableton. So basically those are the same controls, but um, because we are sending MIDI messages over, uh, Ableton doesn't really care what it is that you're doing in Tractor. So what I came up with is that if you have deck C and D, they have these play buttons and you can map those and basically you can map them to whatever you want in Ableton. So let's go ahead and do that. Going back to our controller manager, I'm going to add a new entry. Output for sample deck, of course C and D are sample decks, and it's going to be deck play. Uh, again, the map 2 is not assigned yet. Let's assign it to uh, one hundred and twenty. Now each sample deck has four buttons. So and if we have a closer look, we can see that the deck play is now uh, assigned to sample deck one slot one. We want this to be sample deck 4 slot 3. Now I'm going to duplicate this assignment. So this one, I'm going to set the channel or the message to 121. And I'm going to set the sample deck to deck 4 slot 4. So that's these two buttons here. So this is sample deck 4, slot 3, sample deck 4, slot 4. Now, as I just said, we can pretty much map those controls to whatever we want in Ableton. So I'm going to click on MIDI. If you look in the master, there's two buttons here. And let me open up the help. What this one does is this uh, moves the scene selection up. This one moves the scene selection down. So I'm going to click on up, go back to tractor, and hit that button here. 
check in Ableton. I have now an entry for 120 to scene up. Select the scene down button. Go into tractor and now hit tag 4 slot 4. Check back in Ableton and now I have an entry for a CC 121 scene down. Let's try this out. This should move the scene down. This will move the scene up. Now if you have a closer look at what happens when I click on the scene down button here, uh, it will move when I click on it. The button is now enabled. If I click on the button again, the button disables, but the scene doesn't move. If I click on it again, it now moves, doesn't move, move, doesn't move. That's because the button has an on and off state. Um, and the scene only reacts to the on state, not to the off state. You can fix that by going back into the controller manager. I'm going to duplicate this one. Tag 4 slot 4. Duplicate it. And notice it is... Um, has the CC121 assigned. I'm going to assign the exact same message. So CC121 like that and it has the same deck and the same slot. I'm going to do the same. Oh sorry, I need to now invert that message. So this one is normal. The other one inverted. I'm going to do the same for deck 4 slot 3. So duplicate this and assign the exact same CC message, which was 120, and invert it like so. So I now have a normal one and an inverted one. Close this and now let's try again. If I click up, it goes up every time I click the button and down every time I click the button. Okay, I have some more buttons, so let's assign some more messages. Sample deck, deck play, the message, I'm gonna pick 110 for this one. And I'm gonna assign this to sample deck 3, slot 1. And I'll duplicate this one, invert it, set this to, oh, oops, 110 as well, like so. So I have a normal one and an inverted one. Duplicate this once more, but set this one to deck 3 slot 2. Set the message to 111. Duplicate this one. So tag 3 slot 2. Make this... Oh, it is already inverted, so I have to make sure the other one isn't. And select the same message. That was 111. So a normal one, the inverted one, and 110, just checking, normal, inverted, okay, close. In Ableton, go into MIDI mapping. I have two audio tracks, they have play buttons here. Select play button for deck A, go into tractor, and hit the first button of uh, deck C. That's message 110. Select the play button for deck B. Hit the sec uh, second button here. That's message 111. Exit MIDI mapping. Quickly test this out. Awesome. Of course, you can't hear deck B because I need to. I 
I'm afraid I ran out of time for this video, but there is actually still more to be shown. Uh, so I guess I'll have to do a part 2 uh, with more MIDI mapping. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching.